This is clause number 2021 CR 3248, the state of Texas versus Paul Gonzalez. Attorneys, please make your announcements for the record. Samuel Laws for the state, Your Honor. James C. Law for the defense. Mr. Gonzalez is appearing by video conference from the jail. Go ahead and unmute yourself, sir. Yes, yes ma'am. Hello. Are you Paul, Paul Ray Gonzalez? Yes, ma'am. Okay. On the screen, I have, well, uh, it'll help if I put it on the screen. This On the screen, I have the true bill of indictment that was filed in this case. It alleges. I don't know how to get back to the other. Count one, burglary of a habitation with intent to commit a felony. That felony was an assault family second, paragraph A and paragraph B. Count two alleges assault family second. Judge, offense. I believe this is the that, wrong. That's indictment. the wrong, that's that's the wrong a, indictment. That's the wrong indictment, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Other, <laughs> than, you other than that. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> no, no, you people, that's not in your turn, right? Oh, thank you. Three, two. Oh, it's a four, three. Oh, okay, okay. And this is cause number 2021 CR 3243 for Paul Ray Gonzalez. Okay, so here we go. Uh, it does allege in count one the offense of assault by choking strangulation, second offense, and count two assault family violence, second offense. And then it does have a repeat offender enhancement allegation. State, how are we proceeding on this case? Your Honor, the state moves to waive and abandon count two and the repeat offender enhancement allegation and proceeds solely on count one, but on a, the lesser included offense of assault, family choking, or strangulation only, which would be a third degree felony. A first no, no objection. Okay, so you're you are abandoning the first one, one, two, one, two, one two, the enhancement three. allegation on the assault against strangulation. Correct. Where am I hearing all that noise from? Right up here. Okay. And whatever it says in here, that's what it what it was telling you about. So uh, you can read you can read over it. You can read over it. You can read over it. Uh, sign it. Uh, uh, next to the inmate. Oh, I see. Okay, so Mr. Gonzalez, what we're going to do is when it's your turn to answer, unmute yourself, and then when it's uh, when you're done with your answer, mute yourself again because we hear it clearly over here. Okay, and we probably shouldn't be hearing that conversation. Okay, so we're going to proceed on count one. State you're abandoning the second paragraph of count one and proceeding solely on the assault, choking, strangulation, first offense. That's a third degree felony, correct? Or yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay, Mr. Gonzalez, a third degree felony is punishable by confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, the institutional division for any period from two to 10 years confinement. It also carries a possible fine of up to $10,000. Yes, ma'am. Do you understand the range of punishment that applies to this charge? Yes, ma'am, I do. You have the right to a jury trial. You have the right to cross-examine all the witnesses against you, and you have the right to remain silent. Those are your constitutional rights. Do you understand those? Yes, ma'am. When you sign the document that I have on the screen, you're telling me you want to give up those rights. Is that what you intend to do? Yes, ma'am. Is this your electronic signature here? Yes, ma'am, it is. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes, ma'am, I am. If you were not a citizen, I'm still required to tell you that a plea of guilty or no contest to this charge could result in, in deportation, exclusion from admission to the country or denial of naturalization under federal law. Mr. Gonzalez, are you satisfied with the representation of your attorney? Yes, ma'am, I am. Mr. Seeloff, does your client have a rational and factual understanding of the proceedings against him? I believe he does. Has he been able to assist you in the preparation of any defenses? Yes, he has. In your opinion, is he mentally competent to waive his rights and enter into a plea? I believe he is. I will accept the waiver and make it part of the record. Mr. Gonzalez, let's go over the plea bargain agreement. Um, I'm gonna go over this with you and then I want you to tell me if this is your understanding of the agreement that you made. 
sign. Yes, ma'am. The plea bargain calls for prosecution to proceed on count one, which is the third degree assault choking strangulation. Punishment will be assessed at six years confinement. That is gonna be suspended. On the recommendation of the state, you're gonna be placed on regular community supervision for a period of six years. So it'll be six over six, $1,000 fine. The state is going to dismiss the misdemeanor violation of bond or protective order there's an affirmative finding of family violence. You have to complete the BIPP course, no harmful or injurious contact with Amanda King. We're gonna do a DDRF evaluation. That's the former McMaya. We're gonna do a TAP evaluation and 150 hours of community service. Is that your understanding of the, of the agreement that you made today, Mr. Gonzalez? Yes, ma'am, it is. Mr. Steeloff, is that your understanding of the agreement? That is my understanding, yes. Is that your understanding, uh, Mr. Lyles? Yes, Your Honor. What is your plea to the charge of assault, family violence, choking, or strangulation? Is it guilty, not guilty, or no contest, Mr. Gonzalez? Guilty. Are you pleading guilty because you are guilty and for no other reason? Yes, ma'am. Has anyone forced you to enter a plea today? No, ma'am. Or offered you anything in exchange for your plea? No, ma'am. I will accept the plea of guilty. I find that the plea is voluntarily made and I will ask the state to tender its proof. State offers state's exhibit one along with attachments. No objection, your honor. State's one is admitted. Mr. Seeloff, are you satisfied the state complied with article 3914 in this case? Yes, I do. I will sign the discovery acknowledgement and make it part of the record. Give me just Thank a minute, you. Please. Mr. Lyle. Will the paper, or can I submit my paperwork to County Court for uh, this afternoon? Yes, I already sent the dismissal and judge will sign it. Thank you very much, sir. You gentleman and a scholar. Are we done or? Oh. No, sir, I'm reviewing the evidence. Give me just oh, a minute. That's... I'm sorry, your other. <laughs>
Let's go back on the record, please. I do find the evidence is sufficient to substantiate your guilt. I will find you guilty of the third degree felony offense, assault by choking or strangulation. I will assess punishment at six years confinement. That is suspended. You will be placed on probation for six years. There's a $1,000 fine. The state is going to dismiss cause number 662214. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. You have to complete the batterer's intervention prevention program. No harmful or injurious contact with Amanda King. We're gonna do a DDRF evaluation while you're on probation. We're also gonna perform a TAP evaluation and you're responsible for 150 hours of community service, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank Mr. Gonzalez, you. Yes, ma'am. You, you made an agreement today. I followed that plea bargain agreement. So what the law says is you do not have a right to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay, you're gonna go in a breakout room with probation so you can sign your conditions. Thank you, you're excused, Mr. Sila. And Thank Mr. You. Gonzalez, go into a breakout room. Thank you very much, Judge. Good luck, Mr. Gonzalez. And thank you, Mr. Lyles. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have Lisa Trevino ready. Luis, are you still working on paperwork? You should have received. You should have received the uh, plea paperwork already. I'm sending you discovery right now. Okay. Have you gotten it? The plea paperwork. I'll look. I'll look. Okay. Right please now. check. Yeah. Please check. All right. Thank thanks. you. Actually, I don't have everything ready for the second moment. <sighs> I don't have the uh, yeah, I do. I don't have um, the sort of appeal, actually, on Lisa Gonzalez. Lisa, I'm, you. You. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Judge, are you missing something from Lisa Trevino? I was, but Ashley said she sent a reminder, so I have it now. Okay. Oh, um, Valerie, can you bring me back her, her docket sheet from this morning? Let me just get her docket sheet and then I'll be ready. Okay, on the way. Let me give you things back.
Hey, Ashley, can I get a breakout room with uh, Mr. Gonzalez if you get a chance? Yeah, Ashley can move you around. Oh, you took the other stuff. Thank you. You're both still in 10, Mr. Emmons. You just have to go back. And Ms. Trevino is sworn. Yes, Judge. Okay. Let's go on the record, please. Ms. Trevino, uh, you can stay unmuted. It's pretty quiet in there. This is okay. clause number 2021-CR0834, the state of Texas versus Lisa Marie Trevino. Attorneys, please make your announcements for the record. Travis Rodriguez for the state of Texas. James DeWiggins for Ms. Trevino. Ms. Trevino is appearing by video conference from the Bear County Jail. Go ahead and tell me your full name, ma'am. Lisa Marie Trevino. On the screen, I'm going to be showing you the true bill of indictment that was filed in your case that alleges the offense of felon in possession of a firearm. Do you understand the charges you have today? Yes, ma'am. That's a third degree felony. It is punishable by confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, the Institutional Division for any period from two to 10 years confinement and also a possible fine of up to $10,000. Do you understand the range of punishment that applies? Yes, ma'am. You have the right to a jury trial. You have the right to cross-examine the witnesses against you and you have the right to remain silent. Those are your constitutional rights. Do you understand those? Yes, ma'am. When you sign this document, Ms. Trevino, you're telling me you want to give up those rights. Is that what you intend to do? Yes, ma'am. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes. Is this your electronic signature here at the bottom? Yes, ma'am. If you were not a citizen of the United States, I'm still required to tell you that a plea of guilty or no, contact, no contest to your charge could result in deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or denial of naturalization under federal law. Ms. Trevino, are you satisfied with the representation of your attorney? Yes, ma'am. This is an application for straight, straight probation? Yes. Okay. Mr. Dwiggins, are you satisfied that your client has a rational and factual understanding of the proceedings against her? I am. Has she been able to assist you in the preparation of any defenses? She has. In your opinion, is she mentally competent to waive her rights and enter into a plea? She is. I will accept the waiver of rights and make it part of the record. Ms. Uh, Trevino, on the screen, I have the plea bargain agreement that you made in this case. I'm going to go over it with you, and then I want you to tell me if that's your understanding of the agreement. It okay. calls for four years, so it's four over four. Four years confinement that is suspended. The state is recommending you be placed on regular supervision for a period of four years. There's a $1,000 fine. Um, we're going to do a TAP evaluation and 150 hours of community service. Is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Dwiggins, is that your understanding? It is, Your Honor. Mr. Rodriguez, is that your understanding? It is our understanding, Your Honor. What is your plea to the charge of felon in possession of a firearm? Is it guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. Are you pleading no contest? Because you've talked about this matter with your attorney and you believe it's in your best interest to do so. Yes, ma'am. Are you doing this freely and voluntarily? Yes. Anyone force you to enter a plea today? No, ma'am. Or offer you anything in exchange for your plea? No, ma'am. I will accept the plea of no contest. I find the plea is voluntarily made and I will ask the state to tender its proof. The state offers an evidence states exhibit one and all of its attachments pending any objection. We have no objection. States one is admitted. Mr. Dwiggins, are you satisfied the state complied with article 3914? I am. I will sign the discovery acknowledgement and make it part of the record. Give me just a minute,
Ashley, you should have all the paperwork on Gabriel Gonzalez as well. Let's go back on the record, please. I do find the evidence is sufficient to substantiate your guilt, Ms. Trevino. I'm going to find you guilty of the offense of felon in possession of a firearm. I will assess punishment at four years confinement. That will be suspended. You will be placed on probation for four years. There's a $1,000 fine. We're gonna do a TAP evaluation and 150 hours of community service. Ms. Trevino, this is a plea bargain case. I did follow your plea bargain agreement, so you do not have a right to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you're gonna go in a breakout room with probation so you can sign your conditions. You're gonna get more instructions on how to report. Uh, there's still something we need to address, Your Honor. Go ahead. Um, it, it's my request that you release uh, Ms. Trevino and have her scheduled to show up later for her TAP evaluation. Uh, I believe Travis was opposed to that idea. The reason she took this plea bargain is because she has a infant, a newborn who is in uh, ICU at University Hospital and she just wants to get out so she can go and be with her infant. And she understands that if she fails to show Mr. up to her TAP- Mr. Wiggins, I'm not yes. holding her. I'm not oh, holding well, her. It wasn't, it wasn't said one way or the other, so. Yeah, no, I sentenced her. I placed her on probation already. Okay. All right. Well, then okay. good enough. We do those yes. ever since the pandemic. We do those while they're on probation now. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. You have to go into breakout room with probation, please. Okay. Thanks, James. Thank you. May I be excused, Judge? Yes, Mr. Joygens. Thank you. Let me, um, let me talk to the parties on Robert's. Can you get Mr. Roberts out just really quickly? I thought, I thought, Gonzalez already testified. Why are you recalling? Oh. Yeah, I haven't rested yet. I don't know if there's anything else. I mean, he never really makes any confessions or anything like that, but he wants David, we're going to go on the record on um, Roberts really quickly. Okay. Do I need to go in the breakout room or stay here? I'll stay here for now. Mr. Roberts, we're going to go back on the record. You, I know you, you said you wanted to recall Detective or Investigator Gonzalez, but the state hasn't rested. So that's not the order of how we do it. But what was the purpose of you recalling him? For what specific purpose? He already testified. Everybody already agreed he could be excused. So tell me what you're going to recall him for. Okay. <clears throat> there is a... a um... There's a more than that that has a Texas Penal Code of 3914. When I got the um, Exhibit 1 from the state, that was at the bottom of the page. That was done from 7 1 of 2021, which was um, that day. That's the same day of the report. That's the same day that he was to testify. However, when I looked at um, that report, I looked at the browser of the report, and I also looked at the fact that of what was given to me by the state. You, you asked them to, ask the state to turn over that evidence. Then I went and I looked at that same um, number, which was, um, if you give me a second, uh, which was the 1806610101. Then I, I found that with that same case, with this same information that was exhibited, 
I'd have to um, ask for an exhibit as well because all of the cameras from all of the officers there was deleted as a reportable incident and not as a sexual assault. And <clears throat> Officer Gonzalez testified that it was a sexual assault. Uh, he said that it was an emergency and uh, in the evidence that was uh, Okay, given, so I'm gonna- The evidence that was given- What I'm hearing, what yeah. I'm hearing is that you want to establish that he has said different things at different times. And that is not a suppressible issue. That is more of a trial issue where you're trying to impeach his credibility. So I don't think it's not your turn to recall anyone because you haven't put on your case. This is still the state's case. Oh, wow. I didn't so know. I'm not going to hold this officer <clears throat> any longer today. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, thank you, Investigator Gonzalez, your excuse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you another date for the next... Uh, hearing like who are you going to who do you intend to call as a witness well, I, had, I had given um mr um, porter um that information and it was uh, Hold on, just give me a second. Here it is. <clears throat> One was a Justin Carson and a Carlos Gran G R A N A D O, um, a Heidi Cruz. These are all SAPD officers. Uh, State, do you want to have get the list of the witnesses he needs to call? Yeah, I can get those. Um, if you want to get them now or you want to have Mr. Porter email them to me. Um, I'm going to recall them. this matter September. That's Friday, September the 3rd. That's the next hearing we're going to have. State, I'm not, I don't want to strictly you know, abide by you go first, then he goes since he's representing himself. I would really like to just get oh, yeah, no, all I, the evidence. I heard. mean, I, I can call Gonzalez too. It's just my, um, and I planned on resting for this portion. It's just, there's so many mo motions. So I don't know if Mr. Roberts wants. So Mr. Roberts, yeah. I need you to write down the officers that you want the state to have brought to court. Um, I'm not going to make you issue a subpoena and have it delivered to them. The state has agreed to just voluntarily bring them. And all of those matters are going to be heard September 3rd. That's a Friday. You'll be here in person and we will take care of those. What I'm, I'm going to remind you what I'm trying to establish. I'm trying to gather all the evidence so then I can go back and review all the evidence, all the videos related to any motion to suppress you have filed of any variety alleging any claim. And then I'm going to make my written findings. That is going to be a, a pretty substantial amount of work so that we can get going to trial. Do you understand? Yes, so we're sure. still on the motion to suppress. It'll be September 3rd. And I need the list of the officers that you want to come testify. I'm not going to, after September 3rd, I'm not going to hear any more evidence. We need to, we need to wrap it up. We need to wrap up the motion to suppress. Okay. So is that for 1.30 or 9.30? That no, that'll be for 9.30. And that's in person. Okay. I'm going to take another plea. And then Mr. And then once, once he gives the names over, Deputy, if you could please just uh, send them back and bring out Mr. Montalongo. I do have one additional question I could ask Investigator Gonzalez, but we just already before today. Yeah, no, we're, we're out of time for today. Yes, Investigator, thank you. We're off the record.
I think I have Gabriel Gonzalez ready. Mr. Gonzalez, I'm gonna go ahead and swear you in. Can you unmute yourself and raise your right hand? Are you Gabriel Gonzalez set up and in this case? Yes, ma'am. Are you familiar with the existing stipulations that were attached? Yes, ma'am. And do you saw these words turn correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes, ma'am. You're familiar with the jury waiver? Yes, ma'am. Your attorney has explained to you your constitutional rights and you understand them? Yes, ma'am. It is your desire to enter this plea and waive your right to a jury trial? Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay, you can lower your hand. Thank you. Luis, can you check where the paperwork is on Gonzalez? Let me check real quick. Mr. Paul Gonzalez, are you done talking to probation? If so, you're done for the day. Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm done talking to probation. Sal, did you sign the paper Gonzalez's plea packet? Yes, ma'am, I did. No, Judge, I was uh, just realizing I didn't, I never got paperwork for Paul Gonzalez. Or Gabriel, I'm sorry, Gabriel. You're missing a document, Mr. Mosada. You're missing, uh, pull up your email because there should be an email for Luis to check at the end. Luis, where do you see the plea packet? Let me, I'm looking right now, Judge. Let's see here. Give me one second, please. Yeah, I see he has not signed it yet. Only Mr. Emmons has. What has he signed? The attorney signed, but I don't see, I haven't received, it's still with Mr. Gonzalez. I'm sorry, we probably need to go back in the breakout room. Um, I have work here in Zoom mic went off. Yeah, it shows that he viewed it, uh, but it has not been signed by, by Mr. Gonzalez. Val, can you come get the Roberts file? Yes, Judge. Sam, did Mr. DeVore finish his paperwork? Uh, Roy said he did, but when I checked, it looks like he didn't submit it, so he probably just forgot to click it. I just text Roy about it. The paperwork should be with the clerks now. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez's paperwork, he signed it. Yeah. 
Steve, Steve Pettis was the presenter. Did you press it? Uh, yes. This document has already been signed. Let me see. No, uh, just leave it with the file because it's for my staff attorney to look at. So um, that one is that one is it's not ready to be entered yet, but it might be ready tomorrow. So can you keep it out? Because I might. Yeah, there's an agreed order in there that I might need. No, take it with you, and then tomorrow, if I need it, you can scan it to me. Because okay. it's the the order that both attorneys signed, the one with the pink sticky. I guess that's it. Uh, Ashley, can you hear me? This is Roy Barrera. Do you have all the paperwork for my client? I signed my paperwork, but you need to check with Sam. Check with Sam. So waiting for the plea packet on Gonzalez. Roy, it's yeah, it's still showing that he needs to sign it. Oh, our 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 uh, okay. our uh, computer says we've already signed all the documents. It's not you, Roy. It's the defendant. He needs. No, I know. To no, I'm talking about the defendants. The defendant's email says I just checked it. It says he's he's already signed everything you've sent him. So I sent it to Raquel Matthews at iCloud.com. Is that the right email? Correct. That's right. That's his mother, and she's here with him right now. Let me refresh. Maybe it's just delayed. Yeah. Uh, it, It says uh, Valentino Devora deferred adjudication packet review and sign. And then we hit review and sign and it says this document has already been signed. Did you click submit at the bottom? Frankly, we tried. And at the bottom. Uh, after you resign, I sent the See, Sam, where it says submit. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you have to, he has to, if he misses signature, it won't show up. Okay. So he, yeah, he may have missed his signature. I bet he did. I bet he did. How can I reopen this? Because also I another did, reminder. It should go I to hit, the email again. When I hit review, it just tells me I already signed it. It won't let me review it for him. Is there any other uh, Ashley here? That's it. Let's see if Linda. Yeah, I mean, if you can work out, great. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm sending it to Linda. To verify that he signed for all his wherever it was supposed to sign. Oh, I, I, whatever it takes to help. I, I can't appoint her. I wasn't sure how you She goes away quicker than Ashley, Valerie, you should have all the paperwork now on. Mr. Gonzalez. That's correct. Uh, the clerk has signed it as well. It should be with the judge now. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it should be with the judge. 
I'm ready on Gabriel Gonzalez. State is ready, Your Honor. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Are we going on the indicted case? That is correct, Judge. Roy, check the email now. You should have the plea packet. Check your email now. Let's go on the record, please. This is cause number 2021 CR 3662, the state of Texas versus Gabriel D. Gonzalez. Attorneys, please make your announcements for the record. Yes, Your Honor. Luis Echeverria for the state of Texas. Derek Emmons from Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez is appearing by video conference from the Bear County Jail. Go ahead and tell me your full name, sir. You can unmute yourself. Can you hit the uh, space bar? Let me see. Mr. Gonzalez, you're still muted. There you go, right there. Okay. Uh, Gabriel Can you tell David me your Gonzalez. full name for the record? Gabriel David Gonzalez. Okay, Mr. Gonzalez, on the screen, I have the true bill of indictment that was filed in this case. It alleges the offense of felon in possession of a firearm. Do you understand the charge that you have in this case? Yes, ma'am. You have the right to a jury trial. I'm sorry, let me start with the range of punishment. This is a third degree felony and it is punishable by confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, the Institutional Division, for any period from two to 10 years confinement and also a possible fine of up to $10,000. Do you understand the range of punishment that applies, Mr. Gonzalez? Yes, ma'am. You have the right to a jury trial. You have the right to cross-examine all the witnesses against you and you have the right to remain silent. Those are your constitutional rights. Do you understand those? Yes, ma'am. When you sign the document I have on the screen, what you're telling me is you want to give up those rights. Is that what you intend to do? Yes, ma'am. Is this your electronic signature I'm showing you? Yes, ma'am. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes, ma'am. If you were not a citizen, I'm still required to tell you that a plea of guilty or no contest to this charge could result in deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or denial of naturalization under federal law. Mr. Gonzalez, are you satisfied with the representation of your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Emmons, does your client have a rational and factual understanding of the proceedings against him? In my opinion, he does. Has he been able to assist you in the preparation of any defenses? Yes, he has. In your opinion, is he mentally competent to waive his rights and enter into a plea? In my opinion, he is. I will accept the waiver and make it part of the record. Let's take a look at the plea bargain agreement that you made, Mr. Gonzalez. I wanna go over it with you. The plea bargain calls for punishment to be assessed at four years confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. It doesn't appear that there's any applications for probation. The state is going to dismiss another felon in possession of a firearm, a tampering with ID and something else. What is that? Judge, yeah, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, for some reason, when I did the paperwork, it was not, it didn't look like that at all. I'm not sure why it does look like that now. That third case, Judge, is a misdemeanor case. Cause number is 665278, discharge of a firearm in a municipality over 100,000. 
discharge of weapon in a city greater than a thousand, a hundred thousand people. Is that your understanding of the agreement, Mr. Gonzalez? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Emmons, is that your understanding? It is, Judge. And Mr. Echeverria, is that your understanding? It is, Your Honor. What is your plea to the charge of felon in possession of a firearm? Is it guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. Are you pleading no contest because you have talked about this matter with your attorney and you believe it's in your best interest to do so? Yes, ma'am. Are you doing this freely and voluntarily? Yes, ma'am. Has anyone forced you to enter a plea? No, ma'am. Or offered you anything in return for your plea? No, ma'am. I will accept your plea of no contest. I find the plea is voluntarily made and I will ask the state to tender its proof. The state offers state exhibit one and all attachments pending any objection from Mr. Emmons. No objections. State's one is admitted. Mr. Emmons, are you satisfied the state complied with article 3914? I am judge. I will sign the discovery acknowledgement and make it part of the record. Give me just a minute, please. Yes, Your Honor. State, was there a possession of marijuana case that was rejected? I'm sorry, Judge, you said a possession of marijuana? Mm -hmm. It's listed in the offense report. Let me double check, Your Honor. Yes, from this particular offense report that involves Kirby PD, there was a possession of marijuana, zero to two ounces, and that was closed out. Uh, it looks like it was, in fact, Dismissed in the interest of justice is what the system says. Okay, thank you. Let's go back on the record, please. I do find the evidence is sufficient to substantiate your guilt. Mr. Gonzalez, I'm going to find you guilty of the offense of felon in possession of a firearm as alleged in the indictment. I'm going to sentence you pursuant to your agreement to four years confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division you get credit for the time you have been in custody in this case. This is a, um, and I apologize, as, as part of the plea bargain agreement, the state is going to dismiss three cases against you. The first one is Night Mag 622403, tampering with ID number, that's out of County Court 8665277. The last. 
last one is discharge of a firearm, 665-278. This is a plea bargain case. I did follow your plea bargain agreement, Mr. Gonzalez. What that means is you do not have a right to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, if you have nothing else pending, you're gonna be remanded to the custody of the sheriff's office to begin your sentence at TDC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmons, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Emmons. By the way, Derek, I got the good news on Natalie, on the former Isaac Kingsford. Uh -huh. You're you're muted, Derek. Is that it? Uh, yes, you can go. Okay. Judge, I do have one matter, Mr. Gonzalez, before he leaves. Um, oh uh, yes, yes, Mr. Uh, Gonzalez, hang on. He wants to talk to you. Judge, you he's not in the breakout room. No, no, I need to actually speak with the court on him. Oh, okay, go ahead. Judge, he's actually not in custody right now. In the case he just got sentenced on, he's in custody in the new felon possession of farm and the night mag number. So we're asking the court to give him credit for any time he spent on the night mag number as well, which is approximately eight days, I think. Okay. Uh, Valerie, did you catch that? We need to book him on that, on this indicted case. I hate it when that happens. I can't tell you how much I hate when that happens, but he'll get credit for the time he's been in custody on this case, Derek, whether it's the night mag or the indicted case, we're going to make sure he gets custody. Okay. okay. I think there's two days on the indicted case, but he has about eight days in on the unindicted case because he's out okay. on, on the indicted case when he picked up the unindicted case. Um, no problem. Regarding Ms. Kingsford, you're, you're referring to his placement? From, yes, that's good, very good news. Finally. It is very good news. It is a long time coming. Yes. The civil commitment was exactly, I'm telling you, I'm already thinking like pilot program as a result of that case. Like there was, you know, there should be, especially on the criminal side, when we identify somebody that could be civilly committed, we need to, we need to have a structure in place to help them right. because that place where he ended up is the best place for him right now. And hopefully they came back. So, to I think he's down in Del Rio or someplace like that right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it was in Del Rio. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll see right, you soon then. Care. Take care. Take care. Is Mr. Devora sworn in? Yes, Judge. Are you ready to update the court or are you just ready to have some private time? Um, I need to have some time with the parents and the next Can he sit in the jury box? And then once I finish with this, we'll shut down the screen and give him some privacy. Mr. Barrera, he's on the, is he on the phone? Are you ready? Yes, yes ma'am, we're ready. Okay. Is your client sworn in? Yes, my client is Valentino Devora, Judge. Yes, is he I sworn in? I did swear him in. You did? Okay, let's get on the record. Zoom hearing, so I, I, I want to let you know that I'm on Zoom. Right 
Okay, I have his uh, indictment pulled up. Let's go on the record, please, David. This is cause number 2021 CR 3169, the state of Texas versus Valentino Edward Devora. Attorneys, please make your announcements for the record. Samuel Laws for the state, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, Roy Barrera Jr. for uh, Mr. Devora. I um, think I should bring to the court's attention that there is a particular named victim in this matter that I've discussed with uh, the prosecutor that... Uh, Roy, we're proceeding on count two only, which is Gloria's okay, case. Okay, just we're waiving the other counts. Attention. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, Mr. Devora, on the screen, I have the true bill of indictment, and I'm just going to go over what it says right now. What it alleges is uh, two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, naming two different complainants, and then there's an injury to a, the elderly, uh, count three. State, how are we proceeding? State moves to waive and abandon counts one and three and proceeds solely on count two, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Mr. Devora, uh, an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon is a second degree felony, and it is punishable by confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, the Institutional Division, for any period from two to 20 years confinement. It also carries a possible fine of up to $10,000. Do you understand the range of punishment that is applicable to this indictment? <laughs> when you... Uh, do you see this document that I have on the screen called the court admonishments? All right, hold up. Yes, ma'am, I'll see it. Okay. You have the right to a jury trial. You have the right to cross-examine all the witnesses against you, and you have the right to remain silent. Those are your constitutional rights. Do you understand those? Yes, ma'am. When you sign this document, Mr. Devora, what you're telling me is you want to give up those rights. Is that what you intend to do? Yes, ma'am. Is this your electronic signature here at the bottom? Yes, ma'am. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes, ma'am. If you were not a citizen, I'm still required to tell you that a plea of guilty or no contest to this charge could result in deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or denial of naturalization under federal law. Mr. Devora, are you satisfied with the representation of your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Barrera, does your client have a rational and factual understanding of the proceedings against him? Yes, Your Honor. Has he been able to assist you in the preparation of any defenses? Yes, ma'am. And in your opinion, is he mentally competent to waive his rights and enter into a plea? Yes, he is. I will accept the waiver of rights and make it part of the record. Mr. Devora, on the screen, I have the plea bargain agreement that you've made this afternoon. I'm going to go over it with you. And then I want you to tell me if that's your understanding of the agreement. It calls for prosecution to proceed on count two. There's a $1,500 fine. The affirmative finding of a deadly weapon. Is part of the plea bargain agreement. The state is recommending deferred adjudication. The state will dismiss two possession of controlled substances cases and one resisting arrest. There is to be no harmful or injurious contact with Gloria Science, random UAs. We're gonna do a make my off evaluation. That's the former name, the new name is DDRF. And there's an affirmative finding of family violence by agreement. The period of supervision will be for six years. We're going to do a TAP evaluation and 150 hours of community service. Over. Um, just to clarify, the affirmative finding of deadly weapon is something I hold in abeyance because this is deferred. Did you guys make a different agreement on that? 
No, Judge, that's totally fine. That's yeah. what I expected you to do. Okay, hold, hold on. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. Mr. Devora, is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Barrera, is that your understanding of the agreement? It is, Judge. Yes, ma'am. I and Mr. one question. He just got a job. And do you allow uh, contributions to the San Antonio Food Bank in lieu of community service? I do. And also, Judge, he's been on an ankle monitor as part of his condition of bond. Uh, will that also terminate today? Yes. Okay, thank you, Judge. That's sure. It. Mr. Lyles, is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Devora, what is your plea to count two aggravated assault with a deadly weapon? Is it guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. Are you pleading no contest because you've talked about this matter with your attorney and you believe that this is your in your best interest? Yes, ma'am. Are you doing this freely and voluntarily? Yes, ma'am. Has anyone forced you to enter a plea today? No, ma'am. Or offered you anything in exchange for your plea? No, ma'am. I will accept the plea of no contest. I find the plea is voluntarily made and I will ask the state to tender what? its proof. State offers takes as if it won along with attachments, Your Honor. No objections. Yeah. Wait, wait, I think it was no. Okay, what is I your question? My, I was talking to my attorney. I was actually not guilty. You want to talk to your attorney? Okay, Mr. Barrera, he, he's expressing a desire to enter a not guilty plea. Can you, you want to talk to wait. him in private? Do you well, want to talk to him? I'll be happy to discuss that with him. I, no, it was no contest. It was, I, I got to mix backwards real quick. He got I had a brain fart. confused no contest with not guilty. He uh, he entered a correct plea of no contest, Judge. Oh, good. Okay. I will accept the plea of no contest. I find the plea is voluntarily made, and I will ask the state to tender its proof. State offers state to Zimbabwe one along with attachments. No objections. State's one is admitted. Mr. Barrera, are you satisfied the state complied with Article 3914 in this case? Yes, I am, Judge. I will sign the discovery acknowledgement and make it part of the record. Give me just a minute, please.
make sure my motion I, I, is... I will uh, prepare this motion okay. and send it to Ira tomorrow. I know it will be granted. Okay. Um, anyway, I just... I like she was going to give me the name of the prosecutor who's handling your son's case. <clears throat> Mr. Barrera. Mr. Barrera. Oh, sorry. Mr. Barrera. Yes. Yes. Hello. Um, yes. I can delay sentencing until we get the results of the mental health evaluation, or I can pronounce a sentence today and let him do it while he's on probation. But I would really like to know the level of stability that he's at right now. I agree completely, Judge. I would rather get started with the sentencing and have him do it while on probation. And then if we need to revisit it to make sure that whatever mental assistance he's getting is calibrated to his deficits. Uh, as you may have discerned from his manner of speech, there are some deficits there. And uh, and in addition, uh, possibly some um, uh, chemical uh, uh, addiction issues. Yeah. So uh, he really does need a uh, a um, treatment uh, and and uh, an evaluation uh, for the psychological as well as uh, the. Uh, other issues, Judge. Okay. Let's go back on the record. I do find the evidence is sufficient to substantiate your guilt. Mr. Devorah, I'm not going to make any other findings at this time. I'm going to grant the application for deferred adjudication for a period of six years. There's a $1,500 fine. The affirmative finding that a deadly weapon was used in the commission of the crime is held in abeyance. The state is going to dismiss three cases, Night Mag 604, 031, and 030, and County Court 656-218. There's to be no harmful or injurious contact with Gloria Science. We're going to do random UAs, and we're going to do a DDRF evaluation. Thank you, Judge. I'm going to make the affirmative finding that family violence was committed in this case. Mr. Devora, you're going to start reporting to probation now. We're gonna do some evaluations. And I really need you to 100% cooperate with those. If anything happens and you don't cooperate, you, you miss an appointment, whatever it is, I'm gonna be notified right away. So please know I act on those matters very quickly. I, don't, I take those very seriously. So it's, it's up to you to join me in taking those matters very seriously. Okay? As long as you do your part, you don't have to see each other. We just have to make sure you have the correct um, help and treatment level that you need at this time. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to put you in a breakout room. You're going to go with probation, and they're going to give you instructions that you need to follow for the reporting and for the um for the evaluations so i'm going to sign the dismissals that the state tendered in your cases and also for purposes of the record this is a plea bargain case mr devora i did follow your plea bargain agreement you do not have a right to appeal do you understand sir yes ma'am okay hang tight we're going to put you in a breakout room thank you mr barrera thank you your honor
David, I still have one case here in the courtroom, so I'll let you know what the resolution is. So I'm, I'm going to mute the computer system, but um, we're not done with docket. Okay. All right, everyone else is excused, thank you. Who has um, Mr. Montelongo? State. That's me, Judge. Okay, Samuel, I'll let you know as soon as I know something, okay? Hey, sounds good. Judge, take care and uh, be safe wherever yeah, you are. Thank you. you we'll see you.